organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Tonight on Daily Iowan TV, food, food, and more food. We have an inside look at the Top Chef competition. And today is the last day of National Kidney Disease Month. Learn about one family's battle with kidney disease. Four different Hawkeyes receiving some national attention. Find out who in sports. All this coming your way next. You're watching Daily Iowan TV. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Hannah Thompson. And I'm Blake Jorgensen. There's a new scam alert on the University of Iowa campus. Today, University of Iowa police warned in an email that UI employees are the target of an IRS state and federal tax fraud. According to police, over 80 employees have reported tax fraud. University of Iowa's Assistant Director of Public Safety, David Vizen, said there's no evidence whether the fraud is a result of, the UI, of a UI data breach. The university is searching for the cause. UI President Sally Mason received a big honor today in the Iowa State and the Iowa Senate chambers. The Iowa Senate passed Senate Resolution 24 that saluted Mason's outstanding achievements since 2007 as the UI's 20th president. The resolution mentioned her success in student enrollment, combating sexual assaults, and UI flood recovery. The entire Senate voted in favor and gave Mason an outstanding ovation. President Mason wasn't the only Hawkeye in Des Moines today. Daily Iowa TV's Mary Caldwell was at the state capitol for Hawkeye Caucus Day. Today is the Hawkeye Caucus where students from the university can come to talk to representatives from around the state about issues that involve the university. Each student was given a specific representative to talk to about whatever they wanted and legislatures listened as students told them the way they should vote on certain political issues. Advocating on the behalf of the university, um, we, we made a great stance with uh, the representative, uh, Dean Fisher, um, and, and we're able to really get across our points and, and make our concerns heard. But university students weren't the only ones to advocate for the university. Various departments from the University of Iowa were there to show the representatives how they're doing in all of their departments. They displayed their latest research and their goals for the future. I think some of the best parts of our programs are working with patients who have no economic ability to pay for their, their visits or their surgeries and the ability for the government to keep those programs going because without them, these people would be in a lot of trouble and not be able to have health care every day. The Hawkeye Caucus occurs once every year for the University of Iowa. Reporting from the state capitol, this is Mary Caldwell for Daily Iowan TV. Today, a bill determining Iowa school start dates went to Governor Terry Branstad's desk for approval. The legislation would make schools begin classes no earlier than August 23rd. Senate Majority Leader Mike Gronstel removed his procedural hold on the bill because of school calendar concerns. Governor Branstad is expected to sign the bill into law. And a safety organization is urging the state to change its rules on teenage driver's licenses. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety says by increasing the uh, licensing age to 17, the number of fatal teen car crashes could be cut in half. They also suggest the age for instructional permits be increased from 14 to 16 years old. Iowa lawmakers say these new rules would be difficult to adopt. That's because many teens in rural communities rely on cars to drive to school and work. Recent reports on district growth show the Iowa City School District is expected to grow over the next 10 years. Just this year alone, there was an increase in the number of students enrolled in the district. Reports say progression, birth rates, and survival rates in Johnson County all contribute to this growth. As we all know, Iowa City has some amazing food, but who has the best? We sent Cole Johnson to the Top Chef competition to find out. Cole? Thanks, guys. I'm here at the Top Chef competition at Hotel Vitro, and it has just begun. People are starting to eat some dishes, and it smells fantastic. The 14 restaurants competing prepared their favorite dishes to impress the hundreds of people coming to see who had the best food in downtown Iowa City. The categories range from best entree, mixed drink, dessert, and the brand new category, coffee. In a few cases, some restaurants had a competitive edge over the voters because this was not their first year competing. So our first year we won Best Dessert in Iowa City for our Chocolate Raspberry Amaretto Froyo. And last year we had a great time participating and this year we're back with last year's winners, Molly's Cupcakes. However, the competition didn't scare away any new businesses from competing because it gave them a chance to get their name out to the public. 
we're a newer cafe in the area, so it's great to really get in front of people, let them know that High Ground does more than just uh, coffee. All of the voters were saying the competition was fierce, but they were glad that they had a chance to come out and participate. Overall, they were having a great time with the amazing music, food, and atmosphere. Well, people are still casting in their ballots and are talking about the amazing food they've had. I've had some amazing food myself, and I'm looking forward to see who wins at the end of the night. Reporting from Hotel Vitro, Cole Johnson, Daily Iowan TV. To check out the winners of the Top Chef competition, pick up today's issue of the Daily Iowan. You know, it's probably a good day for a uh, track team to get some work outside. Absolutely. I almost went for a run myself, but then I thought I better not. <laughs> Megan, what else can we expect from the weather for this week? The weather has been absolutely gorgeous these past few days, and tomorrow we can expect another sunny day. But unfortunately, we all know spring can bring some rain as well, so be ready to bring out those umbrellas this week. We'll kick off the morning with a cool 45 degrees and clear skies. That sun is going to stay out all day with temperatures warming up to 67 at noon. But the temperatures won't stop there. We can expect a high of 74 degrees in the afternoon. Wednesday evening will be a comfortable 65 degrees, but there is a 50% chance of rain starting at 8. That Wednesday night rain is going to keep coming down throughout Thursday morning. By Friday, the rain will stop, but it is going to be a cloudy day. The sun will come out again this upcoming weekend, but chances of rain will come once again for next week. That's all I have for now in the weather studio. Back to you at the desk. We're now learning the German Wings Flight 9525 plane crash was caught on cell phone video. A French and German news agency each have access to the video but aren't releasing it. In the video you can hear cries in different languages and banging, presumably from the co-pilot trying to get back into the cockpit. Indiana Governor Mike Pence promised to fix his state's controversial religious freedom law. Pence insists the problem isn't the law itself, but how it's being perceived. The law Governor Pence signed last week has in-state supporters claiming businesses are now allowed to turn away LGBT customers. Pence hopes to pass legislation this week, making it clear this law doesn't give businesses a right to refuse services to anyone. In March, thousands of people throughout the nation raised money and awareness for kidney disease. Reporter Abigail Meyer has a story on one family that hits close to home. It's Kidney Awareness Month. One family took the time to celebrate their son in a three-year anniversary of his kidney transplant. Meet Josh Meyer, my first cousin who battled renal kidney failure eight years ago in May of 2007. Most of the time, by the time you find out you have uh, kidney failure or renal disease, it's too late. Within months, Josh began dialysis. With Down syndrome, Josh and his family had to work together to change his life around a new kind of normal. The entire family committed to help Josh change his diet, schedule time between work and life to take him to dialysis, and assist him in any other needs. He did five and a half years of dialysis, three times a week, four hours at a time. It became a waiting game. After moving from hospitals in Dubuque, Manchester, into the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics, and after five and a half years, Josh got the good news of a new kidney. Families around the nation have similar stories like Josh's. According to the National Kidney Foundation, over 26 million Americans have kidney disease and most are not aware of it. There are currently 123,000 Americans on the waiting list for a life-saving organ transplant. With over 101,000 needing a kidney, only fewer than 17,000 people receive one each year. Josh has always brought so much joy into our lives. I can't imagine not having them. So Reporting from Cascade, Iowa, this is Abigail Meyer with Daily Iowan TV. It's been a pretty great day for many University of Iowa athletes. That's right, Blake. And it seems that at least one Hawkeye in every sport is getting some type of praise. Let's find out more from our sports staff. Taylor Bartz and Nicole Ray are standing by. Ladies? That's right. Lots of Hawkeyes shining bright in the national spotlight. We start tonight with baseball as senior outfielder Eric Toole has been named the Big Ten Conference Baseball Player of the Week. Tool will help the Hawks perform the sweep last weekend over the number 19th team in the country, the Indiana Hoosiers, while going 8-for-16 in the three-game series. 
The senior added to his current 14-game hit streak, notching a hit in every game over the weekend, putting up a 500 batting average while scoring four runs and bringing across four RBIs. This is the first time that the Council Bluffs Iowa native has received this award and the first Hawkeye to be named Big Ten Baseball Player of the Week since a season ago, although Tool is the second Hawkeye this year to earn recognition from the Big Ten Conference, as freshman Austin Guzzo was named Freshman Player of the Week earlier in the year. The Hawkeyes have another midweek game on Wednesday against Western Illinois before the Hawks, the Hawks start off their second Big Ten series against the Boilermakers this coming weekend. The Iowa track and field team is preparing for their outdoor season. Daily Iowa TV sports reporter Aaron Gallagher got the chance to catch up with Hawkeye triple jumper and indoor champ Babatunde Umoso. As the Iowa track and field team prepares for their outdoor season, one athlete is hoping to make a name for himself yet again in the triple jump, an event that has brought him all the way from the UK and made him a Big Ten champion. I started when I was like 14, oh. back in England, uh, sorry. Um, I joined my uh, club, which is called Croydon Harriers. So back then I started off as a high jumper and um, did a few sprints. And then all of a sudden my, my coaches told me, let me just try this new event called the triple jump. I've never heard of it before. <laughs> And um, I give it a try, I won the meet, nice. just kept proceeding to the next meet, and then it was just like, you know what, this is what I wanted to do, and I just stuck to it pretty much. As a two-time Big Ten indoor champion and outdoor All-American, the Hawkeyes are happy he stuck to it as well. But what exactly does it take to achieve so much success in an event that many fans don't know much about? The triple jump takes us three phases. There's the hop phase, there's the step phase, and then there's the jump phase. So it's a jump. And then as soon as you hit the floor, you power back out into the next phase, which is the step phase. And um, you're holding that for as long as you can also, just stretching it as long as, as far as you can. And um, once you hit the step phase, you just let go and you just try and go for the ride. And Tony's personal best is a 52 foot, eight and three quarter jump, about 14 feet longer than the average 71 passenger school bus. Look for many more incredible performances by the senior as he works to take advantage of his last chance to claim his first outdoor title. From the Iowa Recreation Building, I'm Aaron Gallagher, Daily Iowan TV Sports. Thanks for that, Aaron. The Iowa women's basketball season may be over, but the Hawkeyes are just starting to rack up the awards and recognition. Head coach Lisa Bluter has been named the head coach of the 2015 U.S. Pan American women's basketball team by the USA Basketball. Bluter previously served as an assistant coach in 2001, where she went on to win a gold medal. Bluter said, it is an honor to be selected to coach a USA basketball team. I had such a wonderful experience as an assistant coach for the World University Games, and I am looking forward to working with our elite athletes in the Pan American Games, end quote. The 2015 Pan American Games Women's Basketball Competition will take place July 16th through the 20th in Toronto, Canada. Sam Logic is in the headlines again as she was recently named to the 2014-2015 U.S. Basketball Writers Association Women's All-American Team. The 10 women team was announced on Tuesday. This accomplishment is of no surprise to Hawkeye fans. Throughout her time spent at Iowa, Logic is the only player in NCAA history to score over 1,500 career points along with over 800 rebounds and assists and more than 200 steals. Along with this honor, Logic is one of five finalists for the Nancy Lieberman Award presented to the top point guard in women's basketball. She's also among 15 players on the ballot for the John R. Wooden Award presented to the top player in the women's college game. Well, she's definitely made history here in her four years. She definitely has, and she will be missed. Women's basketball isn't the only Hawkeye sport making headlines. After shutting out number 19 Indiana over the weekend, one Hawkeye baseball player's performance earned him Big Ten Player of the Week. That's right, junior Tyler Payton pitched a complete game shutout in Iowa's 2-0 series opening victory over the weekend. Payton opened the week by recording his first triple of the season against Bradley before dominating as a two-way player against Indiana, where he shattered five hits while also recording his first career shutout. Defensively, Payton finished with five strikeouts and zero walks, leading the Hawkeyes to their first win over a ranked opponent since 2012. We are completely out of time for tonight, but tomorrow's show will bring you just as much action with updates on Hawkeye football as one assistant coach will sit down with the media. Tune in right back here for your complete coverage. We will also have a recap from Iowa baseball's midweek game against Grandview State. Hannah and Blake, I don't know about you, but it sure feels great to be a Hawkeye after learning of all the accomplishments being made over the last couple of weeks. Back to you guys. That's all we have tonight on Daily Iowa TV. Be sure to check us out on social media with our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. 
Make sure to join us tomorrow at the same time. And get your local breaking news anytime at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for joining us and have a great night.